some of the end of the employment documents that um, you want to make sure that you provide to employees. You want to make sure you give the employee um, notice of change of relationship uh, for any benefits. Um, you want to give them the unemployment insurance um, information, COBRA notices, health insurance premium notices, notice of retirement benefits if it applies. Um, key federal documents, again, include uh, COBRA and election forms. Um, IRS forms related to retirement benefits. War notices doesn't apply unless it's a layoff. Um, optional documents to provide are termination letters uh, and acknowledgement that the employee received their final paycheck. And if you uh, want to give a separation and a general release of claims um, to the employee. Um, when final wages must be paid, if it's a voluntary separation, um, you have 72 hours. Uh, if it's an involuntary termination, the payment of wages must be made immediately. And if you if you have a termination, involuntary termination, and the employee has direct deposit, um, the employee has to reauthorize the employer to use that direct deposit authorization. So it's probably best to just have a physical check, present that to the employee. Um, documenting the reasons for separation, if you do document um, Actually, you should be documenting the reasons for separation, um, especially if it's related to performance. You want to have ongoing documentation. Um, make sure it's specific and accurate so you can support the reasons for termination. Um, rules on settlement um, settlement and non-disparagement agreements, separation agreements. Um, uh, employers have to give the employee five days to consider, and the disclosure has to uh, advise the employee that they have a right to consult an attorney. There are restrictions on uh, confidentiality provisions and make sure that your separation and service agreements that you're currently using comply with that. Um, we probably have time to maybe just go quickly over the record keeping, Pooja. Um, yes. So there are requirements that you need to be sure you're keeping your records. Uh, wage order section seven has very specific requirements for payroll and timekeeping um, requirements and the uh, requirements to keep these documents for three years and this information, but the statute of limitation for some wage claims does go far, as far back as four years. So we do recommend that you um, keep them for a little bit longer. Uh, the law does require California employers to keep their personnel records for four years from the date the records were created um, or the date an adverse employment action was taken. If the employer is notified that a complaint has been filed with the DFBH or the CRD now, um, the employer must maintain and preserve their personnel records until the complaint is fully resolved or the first date after the period for filing a civil action has expired. And you do want to be sure you're keeping confidential employee medical information separate from the general personnel file. Um, when you get a records request, it, there are a lot of factors that go into determining what goes in the personnel file. And employees do have a right to their personnel records. You have to respond to these requests within 30 days, or it is a um, violation of the labor code. And they also have a right to any document that employees signed, as well as payroll information, which is 21 days. And we recommend once you get one of those requests is to, you know, reach out to an attorney, be sure you are um, gathering all of your documents, figure out what actually goes into the personnel file, analyze what to produce, uh, as well as analyzing if there's any problems or any violations that are apparent on your pay stubs or on your time records. Mm -hmm.